Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and this is the iPad Pro. Specifically, it's the 11-inch model from 2021, and it is, for my money, for my literal money, because I bought it, <laughs> is one of the best computers available right now, and depending on your needs, might be the absolute best computer. And so I wanted to go over today what I have on my home screen of this device, because I think it will help kind of explain how I use the iPad as a productivity device, as a device for entertainment, for just content consumption, but also for doing important work that I need to do every single day and why when I'm not at my desk making YouTube videos or if I'm on the go on my iPhone, this is the computer I'm using. And so I wanted to go over my home screen today to give you an idea of what I'm using, how I'm using it, and maybe give you some ideas for apps that you may want to use in the future. So I'll talk about this app a little later in the video as well, but I did want to thank Drafts for sponsoring this video. You can check it out right here. Uh, but it's a great app for the iPhone, iPad, and Mac for taking notes, for writing, for a whole bunch of other stuff. I'll talk about it later, but yeah, just wanted to thank them right up front for making this video possible. Okay, so this is my home screen, and I'm going to go over things pretty quickly because I don't want this video to be 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> I've made a lot of videos about these apps already, so you can kind of check those out. I'll put some of the links in the description for you, but yeah, let's kick it off with my front row, or my first row, I should say, which is a whole bunch of widgets. I love widgets on the iPad. Um, I was really upset when they weren't in iPadOS 14, was happy to see them in iPadOS 15, and I'm taking advantage of them. So the first one I have is the Carrot Weather widget. So this is for my money, the best, which I keep saying in this video, but I stand by it. Uh, I think Carrot Weather has the best widgets of any weather app out there. I think it's the best weather, best weather app in general. Um, yeah, but I really, really love it on the iPad, especially on the iPad where you don't have a weather app. You do have a weather widget, but not a weather app, which is very strange. But I like how this lays out data. There's a couple options you can use um, for what sort of information you want to see. It supports all the sizes, and you can even customize kind of what shows here. I have the feels like temperature because that's really important, like right now in the winter. And I have when sunset is because, again, that is sometimes very sad in the winter, how early the sun goes down. But I can customize this widget. I think it looks really nice. This is the one that I'm using right now. Next up is one that's actually kind of boring, unfortunately. Uh, it's deliveries. And I don't have any deliveries showing up right now, but I can add one that I have coming soon. Uh, so basically, you can just use this to track any package deliveries you have. I know there's other options out there. Uh, I think Parcel is a one that's getting a lot of buzz lately. It's not quite as pretty as deliveries, but I've been using deliveries for a long, long time. I think it looks really nice. It just works how I'd expect and does the things that I want. So it's the one I'm using. If you want to use Parcel, I think it has an Amazon integration that kind of makes it easier to track your Amazon packages in there. Um, yeah, I, I am just a fan of deliveries, so that's what I still have on my home screen. And I oftentimes do have deliveries coming, so I use this to keep track of those. So the next widget on my home screen is Drafts, and Drafts also happens to be the sponsor of today's video. And I'm totally happy about that because they're already on my home screen and it's easy for me to talk about Drafts because I use Drafts. So what I want to show today is how you can extend Drafts to do more than just what it does out of the box and really customize it to be just suited for you. So you can see my widget here has some of the most recent uh, drafts that I've created. So here's just a bunch of text uh, for some of the most recent things that I've done. And this one is uh, going to be a Twitter thread, actually. So these are, uh, it's a Twitter thread I want to post, just four tweets in a row. And so how do I do this? Um, well, over here we have these actions. And so I can copy this to my clipboard. I can add this to things, publish to microblog, um, create a new sheet or a new video. Like there's things that I have set up as actions that drafts can do to the text in this draft. But today what I want to show you is something you can use uh, to extend that even more. So the drafts directory is a great place to go to see what other things you can use in drafts or what you can do in drafts. So if I go to like the most popular actions, you can see there's things for like things parser or add to a list. Um, fantastic Cal integration looks like something with shortcuts, copy this to Notion, export your draft as a PDF. There's all this stuff here, and this is really, really cool. Some of these will be more useful to you than others, but that's the whole point of having these hundreds of actions you can install. But this TweetStorm one really calls out to me, and so I want to be able to, again, post this to Twitter as a thread. And so I'm just going to install this. It's going to open drafts and say, where do you want to import it? I'll just import it into my basic actions. And there it is. TweetStorm is here. And so it's super simple to do this. All I have to do is hit that, it's going to preview the tweet storm for me or the Twitter thread for me, whichever you prefer. And I can cancel out of it if it doesn't look quite right, or I'll just hit continue and it's gonna publish this all to Twitter and it's done. And I can go onto my Twitter uh, on the desktop here. And if I just reload my profile page, 
there it is. So there's my thread. It's been published perfectly. Everything worked great. And that was super easy to do. There's other services to do this. Twitter.com supports this. The Twitter app does it as well. But it's really nice to be able to write um, in something like this and then publish it to Twitter. And it's totally seamless, totally easy. And you may not want to use this, but there's so many other actions in that directory that you can go to and use and just kind of see like here's all the newest ones like look at all these like that are just coming in um, every couple days there seems to be a new one uh, but if you go through the most popular ones you can probably find some things in here that are going to be useful for your use case there's 34 pages of them so there's probably some things that are useful to you so check out that action directory before you use drafts if you want to kind of see what other things it can do it does a lot out of the box but the actions really elevate it and make it something that's really special. So once again, thank you to Drafts for sponsoring today's video. And then rounding out the widgets, I have the Things 3 widget, which I've made a million videos about Things 3, so I'm not gonna bore you with all those details. But what I like about the widget is that I can use basically every single size available from small, medium, large to the jumbo one <laughs> that's available on the iPad. Uh, it lets me select which list I want to see. So I have the today view, but I could also do a specific project, a specific area. I could do different things that I want to see there. Um, and then the one limitation of this widget, and it's not the widget's fault, it's just the way that widgets work on iPadOS, is that I wish I could mark these tasks as complete from the widget without actually going into the app. The way it works right now is you can tap on one of the tasks and it'll take you to that task in things but you're in the app and you have to do all your actions there. So I'd love to see Apple make these widgets more interactable in the future. They used to be like this before you could put them on the home screen, uh, but with this new style, you're not able to do that anymore. I hope that they add this back. Um, maybe in iPadOS 16, we'll see, um, but I'd really love to see some more interactive elements be able to put in these widgets. Then I have a row of icons that are mostly photo related. So the first three are photos related. So I have Adobe Lightroom, I have Pixelmator Photo, and I have Apple's Photos app. So Apple's Photos app is just there because I deal with my photo library all the time. I use the iCloud photo library to kind of have things sync between all my devices. It's just always, always useful for me to have quick access to my photos. So that goes on the home screen. But then Lightroom and Pixelmator Photo kind of do basically the same thing. <laughs> um, but I kind of have them both on the home screen because I'm, a, I'm, I'm torn between the two worlds. So on the one hand, I really like Adobe Lightroom's uh, just their editing tools. I like how all that works. Um, and I like that I can import my raw images into Lightroom and then I can save the, I can, I can edit them and save the JPEGs to my photo library. Whereas Pixelmator Photo makes me import my raw images directly into my like iCloud photo library and then I can edit them. It's not quite as fast when I, because it uses like Apple's uh, photo library manipulation tools, like modification tools, I have to actually like approve every single change that I make, which is annoying, especially when you're doing things like editing a hundred photo uh, set that you took and you wanna like do a bulk update. It's not really possible in Pixelmator Photo where Lightroom comes out ahead there. So, but I love Pixelmator Photos. Um, other tools, I use Pixelmator Photos super resolution feature to up res screenshots sometimes, sometimes photos. Um, it's a really cool feature. So yeah, I kind of use both of these and they both get on the home screen for that reason. Then I have Fantastical, which is my calendar of choice. I've made uh, numerous videos about Fantastical in the future. I've also worked with them professionally, so uh, they've never sponsored a video on this channel, but I did make some kind of videos in collaboration with them, so just full disclosure there. But it genuinely is my favorite uh, way to view calendars, and with working from home and doing lots of video meetings, I live in my calendar, and so this is super, super valuable to have just with quick access, a uh, beautiful app, really nice app on the iPad, and just, uh, yeah, I like having it on the home screen. Then there's Notion, which I've made numerous videos about as well. It's how I manage this YouTube channel and a few other things. It's how I track changes for uh, the website that I built, quickreviews.app. Um, it's how I keep track of my highlights from Matter, which is my reading app, which you'll see in the doc a little later. Um, it's just an app that I use for a ton of things. And so, yeah, I really like having Notion just available quickly. The iPad app is not particularly good. It has a lot of like weird interaction issues that I don't love. Um, but it does do things that I practically like and get value from, so it gets home screen placement there. And then finally, I have one game on the home screen, and it's Divinity Original Sin 2, which is partially on here just because I like to open this game up and play a little bit. I've played like dozens and dozens of hours on the PC, uh, but the fact that this runs on the iPad and has like mouse and keyboard controls and everything, like I can hook it up to the Magic Keyboard and I can like just play like a PC game, it's really, really impressive that they've been able to bring the entire Divinity Original Sin 2 experience 
to the iPad and have it play so remarkably well. Uh, so you should be seeing some footage of it right now playing on the iPad. It's really impressive and I really enjoy playing it. It's a really hardcore game. Uh, it's gonna be definitely not everybody's cup of tea watching this video, um, but it's so cool to see games like this come to the iPad. And then we get down to the dock and my dock is split into two really. Uh, on the left side is all my productivity stuff. On the right side is all my content consumption, just kind of like vegging out stuff. Uh, so on the left side, we have some of the usual suspects from Apple, Safari and messages. They're just essentials on the iPad. And then we get into things. So things three, which again, I'm not gonna talk about, but is my task manager of choice. I just really, really love it. And then we have Ulysses. I do a lot of writing. Um, I write for uh, other people, other, for other companies, for posting on like their websites. Um, and I also post to my own blog, uh, so on birchtree.me. And so when I write to my own blog, I write in Ulysses basically all of the time and then Ulysses has an integration into Ghost, which is the platform I use for my website, and I can just publish straight from Ulysses. Ulysses has the best publishing options for Ghost, in my opinion, of any app on the iPad, and so that's the one that I use. I've been using Ulysses forever. <laughs> I remember using it uh, before it was even called Ulysses. They used to call it uh, Dad Dadulus Touch or something. It had a weird name. I actually, I, I don't exactly remember it. I'll try to put it on screen right now, but um, they changed the name to Ulysses and they've just iterated on it for years and years and years. I'm such a fan of this app and I'm so happy it exists and that's why it gets a place in my doc. Then we have email and there's no way around it. You have to do email and I use Spark for that. Uh, I use it partially because it's free, uh, which is great. Um, but more importantly for me, I use it because it's reliable. Every single time I get an email, I get notified through it first in Spark. Spark is super fast at delivering notifications, which I don't always need for email, but when I do need it, it's really, really nice to have those uh, arrive quickly. It also sends emails every time. It doesn't make me sign back into my accounts like I get from other apps that just kind of like stop working and I have to sign back into the account. It really annoys me. And then with the like built-in mail app, which I would like to use, I'd love to use Apple's just kind of built-in mail app. That one's just never been reliable for me. It doesn't sync. It doesn't sync quickly at all. It takes like 15, 20 seconds for me to sync my email every time I open the app, which is insane. And I get issues with sending, and there's all sorts of issues that I've had with that app. So Spark gets my pick for being affordable. It's totally free. <laughs> it also gets my pick for being reliable and just looking nice. It has some good keyboard shortcuts that work with the Magic Keyboard. And yeah, it's just a really nice app that I enjoy on the iPad for doing my email. And then there's the Files app, which is kind of boring, so I'm not going to talk about it. It works okay. Um, I wish it was a little bit better, but we don't have time to get into that rabbit hole right now. Then we get to the fun side of the doc, and there's a lot here as well, but uh, basically I have TweetBot. TweetBot is my third-party Twitter app of choice, which is just, it's really nice. I really like the one thing I will call out are the theming options. There's tons of themes that they've released in the last couple versions of the app, and I think they look great. I have kind of this pink and white one that I think looks really good, is really easy to read, and just is a fresh look for Twitter, which I enjoy. Uh, then I have Reader. Reader is my RSS reader. Uh, I've been using it forever. There's lots of RSS readers on the iPad, but this is the one that has always stuck with me. I use Ino Reader as my syncing service on the back end, and it just works great. It's reliable, it's fast, and yeah, I can just follow everything in there easily. I can sort them in the folders and just read to my heart's content. It works really, really well. Now, inevitably from Twitter and Reader, I'm going to get things that I want to read, but I don't want to read them now. And so that's where Matter comes in. Matter is my read it later service, uh, kind of like Instapaper or Pocket. And it just lets me save articles to read later. <laughs> and so when I open the Matter app, I can see a list of the things that I saved. I can read them in a nice view. I can share them. I can create these little cards with quotes from them. I can highlight things and those highlights can sync over to services like Notion or Obsidian or Readwise, and I think they're gonna be adding more, but it's just a really nice experience. One of the other things I really like is that for basically every article that goes in there, uh, there's a play button near the top, and if you hit that, it will uh, use a, it's a robotic voice, but it will basically read out, not a robotic voice, that's not fair. Um, it's using just one of the built-in kind of synthetic voices uh, to read the article to you, which I find is nice. Sometimes I need to drive like 10 minutes I don't really want to listen to a podcast. I'm not really feeling music right now. And so I just put on an article that I have saved in Matter, and that's just a nice experience to kind of hear that while I drive. So yeah, that went a little longer than I thought it would, uh, but hopefully this was entertaining to you. Hopefully you saw an app that you haven't used or haven't used in a long time and are kind of curious about it. You can definitely check those out. I put links to everything on the home screen in the description below so you can find all those there. Uh, I did want to thank Drafts again for sponsoring this video. Um, and again, I just wanted to say that Drafts is on my home screen because I do use it on a regular basis. Um, and it's just very, 
it's very nice when a sponsor is something that I already use and want to talk about. So it's a really good synergy right there, I guess. But I wanted to thank them again for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, you're an absolute hero. Thank you for watching, and I will see you here next time. Bye-bye.